farming has a big problem. It's never gonna be sustainable, but the reason for that is quite intriguing to say the least. Now I'll explain the big global issue with agriculture on a lot smaller example from the Netherlands as they are quite similar. And for those of you who already know about the Dutch issue, just bear with me, it will get pretty interesting. So in this beautiful land of tulips, windmills and canals, the government wants to totally destroy the entire farming industry. Well, maybe that's too far-fetched, but it seems like it. So, let's hear the facts. The Netherlands is in the European Union, and since the EU has made a law by which all the member countries are required to protect their nature, the Netherlands must too. But since the EU law is pretty vague and every country can sort of approach it as it wants, the Dutch made themselves a nice little plan to cut the nitrogen emissions by 49% until 2030 compared to the level in 1990 and they want to mainly achieve that by making their exceptional agriculture productivity more average for example by cutting their total livestock by 30 percent great idea now i spoke to my friend who just so happens to be a dutch farmer about this national issue for those of you who are curious his family raises chicken grows wheat potatoes onions etc it's a medium-sized operation and what's really going on in the netherlands is that the government, which has collapsed this year already, wants to buy out 3,000 farms. I guess livestock farms, mainly around these reservations called Natura 2000s, to protect local nature. This, for some, makes sense. But the thing is that the government makes these decisions based on a really inaccurate model, which I'll explain in a moment. They are also way too focused, for some reason, on closing the farms and stopping the production altogether, instead of innovating their way out of the nitrogen emission problem. And this all causes a country which has farming in its heritage to be full of rightfully pissed farmers that demand a bit more respect and justice. So to explain it on a bit deeper level, the government has tasked an organization called RIVM, which is the Dutch National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, with assessing the whole nitrogen situation in the country and to devise a model based on this, so that the government can see where exactly it needs to cut the emissions. Assessment was made, model was devised, and a map was created. This nice little map depicts the severeness of the nitrogen situation and if you can read Dutch, you can also read that the deep red color means a 70% emission reduction is needed, the second darkest red only a 47-58% to reduction and the rest a 12% reduction in nitrogen emissions. So basically some reduction for the whole country except for the cities for some reason. What's funny is that the agency didn't bother making many measurements on the actual farms or anywhere really. So the data is very wobbly on the country scale, it's absolutely unusable for specific operations and it has already changed quite significantly in the past. And despite all this, it's supposed to serve as the center point for all the legislation. But it gets even worse. So far, this was only the incompetency of the agency and the government that was forcing real farmers who are putting blood, sweat and tears into their craft every single day so that we have enough food to eat, to leave their land and whole livelihood really for some financial compensation. But recently, a new study based on actual measurements from a third-party university research team was published and it largely discredited the whole various model that the government was using. It basically proved that the model is very wacky and that it tends to overstate the reach of the emissions by a lot. So now we have an incompetent government, an incompetent agency that made a really bad model for the government and a third party team of scientists doing their job and proving the model and the government wrong. But now it gets really interesting. According to the Dutch news medium for agriculture, Boren 
business. Earlier this year, the RIBM published their research paper with measurements that took place already in the 2010s. This paper is supposed to be largely in agreement with the findings of the UVA team. So, as Born Business suggests and many Dutch farmers believe, even the RIVM knew that the Aries model wasn't all that great and had doubts about it all along, but kept them secret and happily pushed the model to affect the masses. And this wouldn't be incompetency no more, but downright disgusting lying to the public with the potential to negatively impact the lives of thousands of farmers and even the whole food security and economy of the entire country to some extent. Now, I'm not saying that farmers don't emit any nitrogen, but it's not like the sole life purpose of a farmer is to wake up and pollute the environment. In fact, the Dutch farmers and I believe all farmers really have already made a significant effort to cut their emissions which you can see on this graph. And their main life purpose is to take care of their land, the animals and to feed humanity, which sometimes goes unappreciated. So at the end of this video, I'll suggest a reasonable solution for the Dutch problem. But now let's take a more global perspective. It seems like the whole modern society is increasingly at war with the very things that make it possible. For example, the Netherlands banning farmers from farming. Or almost all the countries turning against nuclear power plants. Even though it's literally the cleanest, most efficient and most reliable source of energy we have. So how I see it is that there are a few people, either the rich and powerful behind the mass media or some green influencers that push all these agendas like red meat is bad, go vegan, farming is unsustainable, nuclear is the worst, eat bugs and live in a pot. Even though I'm not necessarily against eating insects, I just don't think anybody should be forced to do it. But what's worse is that this hopefully small group of influential folks get a lot of traction with people living in the cities for the their whole lives. Farming needs to stop. That's the single biggest driver of climate change. Since, and I don't mean to insult nobody, but when you've never visited a farm, never tried to grow something, or never traveled to destinations other than big cities in developed countries, you never really have a chance to discover how things actually work. And hence, a person is easier to convince that the farmers and power plants that make his or her city life possible are all bad. And when listening to the news, it sometimes seems like the only way to redeem our Ourselves is to return to an agrarian society and to farm like Masanobu Fukuoka. I'm not making fun of him, I just don't think very many people want to give up their comfortable office job, buy a plot of land and dig in the mud for the rest of their lives. <laughs> このね、馬小屋人、あれがアルファファですね。馬小屋人がアルファファとかベジタブルとバリとミクスしとけばどんな悪い草でも草がなくなってしまう。だからね、どうしてこんなことかとしたかというとタイとかビルマとかインド行く
there is one already. In recent years, scientists have been testing the impact of feeding red seaweed to cattle on digestion-related methane emissions, and found out that with just 1% of the diet being red seaweed, the beef cattle produce 67 and the dairy cattle up to 98% less methane than usual, which is likely caused by the red seaweed eliminating the gut microbacteria responsible for methane production. Well, I'm now editing the video and to realize that methane doesn't have anything to do with nitrogen, so sorry for that, but it's still a cool fact. There are also other possibilities in terms of improved manure management and so on, but the main message is that First, we should try to innovate before we ban our farmers from growing our food. Thanks for watching.